So much time, so much love, so much money and attention, you fucking donkey. I love you so much. What's going on everybody? Welcome to a special episode of Yami Noob where I'll actually be talking about one of my personal bikes as opposed to a giveaway bike or cool content for you guys to talk about. This is a kind of a self-indulgent video, but I think people do like seeing what's going on behind the scenes with me. So we'll talk about it. What is this? Uh, this is my CMRA race prepped Daytona 675. Are. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the journey of this bike, um, what all has been done to it to make it race prep versus track prepped, what's going on with it, and kind of the future of it and a couple things we still have to do to get it up to spec. But I really wanted to make this video because we just kind of put the finishing touches on it and it's finally good to go. And I really wanted to talk about it because I'm really, really excited about it because this is literally uh, my dream bike. So let's get into it. Okay, so for those of you who might be kind of newer to the channel, uh, if someone doesn't know this by now, the Daytona 675R is literally my favorite motorcycle of all time. Uh, I think it's the best middleweight super sport bike. Um, it has the best engine, it has the best handling, it feels so good flicking over from side to side. Um, I absolutely love the platform. I've owned two of them in the past. This is my third Daytona 675R that I've owned. Uh, and this one I picked up May of last year as a 100% dedicated track motorcycle. So that means I never registered it for the road, never had it insured, never did any of that normal road stuff. And as soon as I got it, I started taking parts off of it and um, getting it prepped for track duty. Uh, when we say track prepped, you know, it's stuff like disconnecting the headlamps, taking off the mirrors, the blinkers, the tail section, uh, for the, the fender, um, you know, just, just kind of removing things here and there just to kind of make it a little bit more track worthy, taping up the headlights so that whenever you go down, glass doesn't go everywhere, it's just standard procedure. So it ran track prepped for a good nine months. Uh, I was able to probably put down about 25 to 30 days at the track with the 675R in its, you know, pretty much stock track spec configuration. The only thing I'd do to it was just continuously swap out tires. My preferred tire is the Dunlop Q4. So that's really all I did with it for a, a while. I just kept running it, getting good with it, because the bike is so good in stock form. I was like, I don't really think I need to, you know, s you know, make all these little changes and adjustments to it. So I was like, what, what this bike really needs is a rider mod. And so as my skills started to increase, uh, I started noticing things that I wanted to change on it. Got the suspension sorted out. Actually need to go back and get the suspension sorted out later, but we'll talk about what else needs to be done to this bike. And then, you know, kept getting faster and faster and faster. It was eventually putting down a 213 at Eagles Canyon Raceway, which is my personal record over there. That's about, you know, four to five seconds off from an expert level pace. And the expert level pace is about four to five seconds off from like a professional level pace. Uh, so a pro rider at that racetrack does about like a 203, 204, and then a really fast rider does like a 208 or a 209. So I'm right at 213. I'm like high intermediate. I'm getting close to that expert level, but not quite there yet. Uh, I think slicks or something like that will help, but I, I still think I can squeeze a little bit more out of these Q4s. So what happened to me making this completely race prepped? So a couple things. Uh, back in February of this year, early February, uh, I had a coolant hose burst on me while I was on track. Unfortunately, it happened right as I was coming into turn 14. It blew up. Person behind me said that they saw a big puff of like, you know, f uh, smoke or, you know, liquid or vapor or something like that. And basically, as I was mid-corner, my foot slipped off. I felt super weird on the bike and then all of a sudden it just, I tucked the front end completely and lost traction. Uh, I'll put up a photo of that burst coolant line right here. Because what I think happened was it burst and it got all over the front tire. And even though it was wetter water slash uh, water, distilled water that was running as a coolant on this bike, uh, you know, that sudden difference in traction as I was trailing it in probably caused the crash. What the f was that? 
strange noises here in the office. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I suspect that that's what caused the crash. Um, you know, I'm, I'm almost positive that's what caused it. And so right around that time, I was actually getting ready to do my CMRA licensing school. So I had a date scheduled for March to do that. And I was planning on doing it with my RC390, which then I had to do it with my RC390 because this bike was out of commission. So I low sided the bike. Uh, it was really minor damage. I had some frame sliders on, case sliders, so all that happened was a lot of cosmetic damage and then uh, needing to replace the coolant hoses and a couple other things as well. So I took it over here to uh, Cousin Bob's in Austin, Texas. Thank you, Cousin Bob, for helping me fix up my bike and doing a lot of work to it. And yeah, you know what? I was like, you know what? I crashed the motorcycle, so there is literally no better time than the present to turn it into a race bike. So I made the decision to keep my RC390 as a track prepped training bike and then turn this into my race bike. When we say a race bike versus a track bike, um, there's lots of things you have to do. So here for Texas, for the CMRA uh, body that uh, sanctions racing events along with the AMA, uh, they have an entire rule book of things you need to do to a motorcycle to make it race worthy. Uh, most of these things are for safety, right? So the first thing we had to do to the motorcycle was safety wire everything. Every oil opening, every possible thing that could come off, everything that is critical to the motorcycle needs to be safety wired in. So I'll overlay some footage right here of things that we've done to the motorcycle that are safety wired and little changes here and there. Uh, and that makes it, you know, rep, prep for racing for safety wiring. Uh, the other things you have to do are, uh, you don't have to have race plastics on there, but it's common practice because you need to have a belly pan down here that can hold enough fluid that fall out of the motorcycle. It holds about five quarts or something like that. So we had to get it ready down here with the, the belly pan. So this is an armor bodies race kit that we put onto it that will now hold that fluid down there. Uh, the other thing we had to do is remove the kickstand. So the kickstand is gone. Uh, I did an ignition delete on this motorcycle, so there's no more ignition on there. That's just for, you know what, like I don't really wanna worry about having a key on my race bike. It's just easier to just have it, the ignition deleted and to just turn on with that. Um, so yeah, safety wired everything, race plastics, no brake lights, no headlights. Uh, the other bits and bobs we need are, we need to get uh, race numbers on here. So they need to be a yellow plate with a black number on there, both adorned on here in the front, one in the back and then two on the sides. You need to have CMRA decals on the motorcycle or else you can't score points. Um, there's, there's a bunch of little odds and ends that we needed to do to this bike to make it prep for racing uh, and then when I went down as well, my old exhaust was kind of smushed and it made it sound weird. So I ended up putting this absolutely beautiful Competition Works exhaust system on there. Oh, the other thing we need to do as well is get a brake lever guard right here that's coming in the mail. We need to get a, a, uh, a red brake light affixed to the end of it in case of rain. So whenever you're racing in the rain, you wanna have a rear brake light on there to permanently on the whole time. Uh, that can be Velcroed on, it can be battery powered, it's not a big deal. So we're still missing that stuff. I need to get it over to Roger to get the suspension fine tuned for this new weight because with all these race plastics and things that we did to it, we probably dropped a good 30 pounds on this motorcycle. I was looking at some of the old stuff, the, the front of the bike, I can just show you some of this. We got the seat here, we got the old tail, it weighs a ton over here. Uh, we've got the old front of the motorcycle right here. Um, literally all this stuff, like this this doesn't have anything in here anymore. And I'll show you guys in some of the close-up shots. So this doesn't have anything on there anymore. Uh, and it's just so much more lightweight. Um, there's no more horn. There's no more left side assembly over here for the lights and all that. There's a new windscreen right here. I'm so excited about this motorcycle because it's, it's the bike I've always wanted. It's a race prepped. 675R. It is so aggressive. It is so ridiculous. It weighs nothing. I just took it out here in front of the shop just to kind of kind of clear the cobwebs out a little bit. Um, and it just absolutely rips. Uh, the other thing we did as well, speaking of that, because I just remembered the smoke that was coming off of it, we uh, wrapped the exhaust. Um, the reason we did that along with the new hoses, the new Samco hoses, is to make sure that uh, we won't have any more coolant uh, issues. I, I wanted to just be triple sure. You don't have to heat wrap the exhaust, but I wanted to just be completely sure we were not going to run into that issue anymore. So I ended up heat wrapping the exhaust and putting the new uh, coolant lines in there to make sure that we don't have any more issues with that. There's tons of other little things that we had to do to it. Uh, got the servo motor 
sorted out over here because the original exhaust had a little exhaust valve that would open and close. Now it's just running straight and clear. One thing that I probably want to do to this bike is just get it dyno tuned and set up for the new full system and just get it, you know, nice and properly fueled. That would be good. And then that's basically it. It's gonna be good to go for a while like that, hopefully. Uh, but the, the thing I wanna stress is whenever you run a race bike or a track bike, uh, it's like it's a never-ending thing. There's always little things here and there that you wanna do to it. There's always little fun pieces and accessories you wanna put onto it. Uh, and it just, um, I could not be happier with this machine. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, I cannot wait to see how it performs at the track and uh, during races. Unfortunately, oh, the other thing I need to get is a transponder as well. The other thing that sucks is because of the pandemic, uh, all racing events have been canceled. So for April, there was a CMRA event happening later this month, but now it is unfortunately canceled because you know you can't have a bunch of people gathering in one place like that. So if we're lucky, it's gonna be June. That's gonna be the first race. I think they're gonna cancel the May's race as well. So I think in June, we'll be able to do our first race, but I'm very lucky in that uh, Eagles Canyon Raceway, my home track where this bike runs most of the time, they are still open somehow. So they're doing you know, these events where you have to sign up way ahead in advance and schedule it, and they're only limiting it to like 10 to 12 people at one time, so you gotta get in, but you can still get some track time in, which is really, really great. So I'm looking forward to running this bike on the track and kind of dialing it in and setting it up and getting comfortable with it again. It's been about two months since I've ridden it, um, you know, earnestly at the track. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at the uh, 675R. I'll leave you with this little snippet of a vlog as I was out in front of the shop, just kind of running the bike, just so you can hear how it sounds a little bit. Um, but it is just a stonkingly good motorcycle. Uh, I. I cannot tell you how awesome it is now. Uh, I can really feel how much lighter it is and how much it, it feels like it's nothing. Uh, you sit atop of it and it just absolutely shreds. Like I wanna get this thing out on track so bad. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. Appreciate you tuning in to check out my ridiculous uh, race bike that I own now. And uh, yeah, hope you uh, tune in for the vlogs I'm gonna put up eventually my first races and that kind of stuff should be pretty fun. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be lucky to finish anywhere near the top 50%, I assume, but it's gonna be a blast and I can't wait to try it out. Uh, and then of course, you know, more track vlogs are coming with this bike as things kind of come up with it and things happen with it. I'm gonna be very excited to share that with you guys as well, if you're interested. Uh, the track day stuff never really gets that many views, but I feel like the people who watch it really care about it and really think it's cool. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you guys in the next one.